There are small resin printers, there are big resin printers, and then there's the Phenom from Pia Poly. Resin 3D printing has really evolved over the last couple of years, and this machine is a testament to that. It is an absolute monster in size, and unlike any other resin printer that I've ever gotten my hands on or been able to test out. So in today's video, we're gonna take a first look at this machine, go over its specs, take a look at its features, set it up, and of course, do some printing. I hope you guys are excited, and without further ado, let's get right into the video. So Pia Poly sent over the Phenom so that way I can test it out and use it for some projects on the channel which I am incredibly excited for. Starting off, let's take a look at the specs on this machine. I'm sure the first question many of you have is what is the build volume? The Phenom has a build volume of 276 by 155 by 400 millimeters which is absolutely ridiculous. Compared to any other resin printer I've ever used before, it is triple, quadruple, even more so than that, I mean, it, it can fit other resin printers inside of it. That's how big it is. So the build volume on this thing is absolutely insane. So the Phenom is using MSLA or masked stereolithography, which we've talked about quite a few times on this channel. That basically means there is an LCD screen that displays an image and that's where the light is able to shine through and cure the resin above it. What that means is the resolution of your printed parts is directly related to the pixel density of your LCD screen. In this instance, it is a 4K panel, which will give you a 72 micron XY resolution. The build plate and the vat are both made out of aluminum with the vat using your traditional FEP film. This is considered a consumable and depending on how much you print in one spot or how much you print in general will basically decide how often you need to replace it. But essentially you're gonna wanna replace it once it starts to get cloudy and affect your print quality. This machine has the latest build plate, which has a curved top on it. The curved top is great because when the build plate rises out of the vat, if there's any resin stuck on top, it'll just drip back into the vat and not require you to scrape off any of that resin that's stuck on top of it. It's a flat top. The entire build plate is riding up and down on a massive ball screw and two large linear rails, which is great. It means it's gonna have very high precision and be very rigid, which is incredibly important when we are dealing with such high resolution prints. The construction of this machine is incredibly tanky. My dog's probably gonna bark, but it very much so, she's looking at me, but it very much so reminds me of like a vault or a safe. This machine is huge with a footprint of 452 millimeters by 364 millimeters by 780 millimeters and also weighs around 90 pounds. You will definitely want to have a team lift and make sure that you've got some sturdy furniture or a sturdy desktop to put this on. I'm using kind of like a Ikea workbench that is able to hold a couple hundred pounds so I've got no problems. But yes, this is something that needs to have a specific space on a, on a sturdy structure that can hold it in place. There's a really nice large door on the front with two hinges that allow you to view your prints and access the machine if you want to clean anything out. And there is a four and a half inch touchscreen on the front that'll be used to control the machine, start a print, as well as see the current status of your print job. There are vent holes on the left side, on the right side, and on the back of the machine. And as far as connectivity goes, you can print over a USB flash drive, which is what I've been using, or it's got an ethernet port that you can use to send jobs from Chit2Box to the machine. As always, that makes me very happy that Chit2Box is the slicer that is recommended using with this. To me, it is the, it is far superior compared to all the other resin slicers I've used and the profile for the Phenom is now baked into the slicer. So you don't even have to manually add it. You just go to add printer, go down to Pia Poly and select the Phenom and it'll add all of the machine specific settings for you. 
Now, since this is MSLA technology, you can technically throw other MSLA resins into the machine and have them cure. However, Piapoli does only recommend sticking with resins that they have approved, mainly because the LCD screen, like on all MSLA printers, is a consumable, but in this instance, it's a massive LCD screen and it generates a lot more heat than a smaller LCD screen would. And the resins that they have approved are like formulated in a way where they shouldn't generate excess heat, which could in turn shorten the life of your LCD panel. So there are users out there that I've seen that are using third party resins, but it's definitely something to consider that the LCD screens are rated for an average of 400 hours and you definitely want to get the maximum use out of them before having to replace them. And I think it's a good idea to always have a spare LCD screen on hand, again, just for when it's time to replace it or if it goes down, you can just easily swap it out and not wait for a new LCD screen to come in. For being such a big printer, setup was a piece of cake and actually no different than any other resin printer I've previously used. You basically throw in the build plate onto the arm that raises and lowers, loosening the four screws to drop the build plate down, having the printer home itself, and then with one hand, I held the build plate down, used my other hand to tighten the four screws again and make sure that it was completely flush with the uh, LCD screen. Then I raised up the build plate, checked the LCD screen and the UV light to make sure it was working. There's a built-in function that basically just shows a test square that you can see the LCD screen and the UV light is working accordingly. Once I saw that it was, I threw the vat on, the massive vat with uh, two screws that were included and I was ready to go. All in all, setup for this machine really shouldn't be more than about 15 minutes. In my instance, I did have a flex plate from Wham Bam Systems that I threw onto the Phenom. However, this doesn't change anything and the setup is going to be exactly the same as I previously mentioned. Now there is a test print that comes on the included flash drive which is uh, there to make sure that your LCD screen is working all the way across and that your build plate is level. It's a fairly quick print compared to what this printer can do but I decided to just throw a big print at it. I was confident that I had seen the LCD screen was working and that my build plate was level. So I found a super awesome Majora's Mask from the Legend of Zelda model online. I've actually had my eyes on it for a long time and knew that this was the first thing I was gonna print. As far as resin goes, I went ahead and used Soraya Tech's Fast Resin, their Fast Gray Resin. This is one of the resins that is approved to use on this machine um, by like them officially. And the reason why this has become a standard resin for me for MSLA printers is it's got incredibly low cost. It's got really high quality um, prints, especially in the gray. It shows all the nice detail and it's very low odor. Because I am forced to print inside, low odor is something that is very important to me as well. When it comes to settings for this resin, on their spreadsheet for the approved resins, it actually has the recommended burn-in layers, the uh, burn-in layer cure time, the standard layer cure time. It's got, they've got uh, instructions for how thick you should have your walls if you hollow your model and all sorts of different things. So I just went ahead and basically copied over their settings into Chit2 box for this resin and that is what I ran with. So I went over to Thingiverse, downloaded the Majora's Mask model, I imported it into Chitu Box, and I went ahead and scaled it up to basically as big as I could on the X and the Y. If I had rotated the whole mask vertically, I could have gone even bigger, but this was plenty big for me. So I, again, scaled it as big as I could on the X and Y, tilted it back, and then I went ahead and hollowed it out because I didn't want to use an excess amount of resin for something that didn't need to be fully solid all the way through. Um, they recommend using a wall thickness of at least two and a half millimeters, so I opted for three and a half millimeters. I think three millimeters would have been more than enough, but I did go with three and a half millimeters, um, which is really easy to do in Chitu Box. I then added six drain holes to the back side of the mask so that way resin could escape and it would not be somewhere that was visible. Six holes probably was a little bit overkill, but in this instance, it, it just didn't matter since it wasn't going to be, uh, again, visible on the final print. And then I did need a lot of supports. Uh, Pia Poly recommends using the heavy support settings in Chitu Box, so that's exactly what I did. I clicked heavy, clicked generate supports everywhere, and I didn't touch a single uh, setting in the support settings. I just left them completely as is. Thanks to the latest update for the Phenom, it's now compatible with Chitu Box's latest file type, which I believe is .ctb. The main difference between this and the previous one is that the files are much more compressed, meaning that they will save a lot quicker and take up a lot less space on your flash drive. I saved that over to the flash drive and then I was ready to print. Starting off with, I poured two 500 milliliter bottles of resin into the vat, which seemed like a good start. It was probably half of a vat roughly. Um, Pia Poly recommends having a fair amount of resin in the vat, even if you're not doing a super big print. The main reason for that is that the resin also helps to dissipate heat coming off the LCD screen. And the less resin you have in the vat, the hotter it will get quicker. 
All that was left to do was plug in the flash drive, navigate to the file and hit print. And the print time on this was roughly 28 to 30 hours. So I ran it over the weekend. I will say that once you get a print started, the fans will kick on and they are very loud. After a while, it became more of just an ambient background sound to me, but I will say that you will want to have this in a designated room or in a shop or in a garage and not in a main area, which in all honesty, that should be the case with most resin printers just because of the nature of resin printing. But certainly due to the size and sound of this machine, um, you want to have that for the Phenom. So I checked on the print every couple of hours. I ended up actually adding another bottle of resin just to make sure that I had enough resin as I slept because I really, it seemed like it was drinking a lot of resin and I had a hard time telling how much resin was left. And one of my biggest fears over the weekend was that there would not be enough resin to complete this print and I uh, didn't want that to happen. It was really exciting watching this massive structure rise up out of the vat. And I was a little bit sad though because I, actually had rotated it kind of backwards. And so all I could see was the backside of the print and the supports, which did look really cool, but I didn't get to see the mask until it was completed. So at the 30 hour mark, the Phenom beeped, the fans turned off and my print was sitting there dripping some resin off of it. I went ahead and put my gloves on and just undid the flex plate and rotated it around so that way I could see the front of it. And I was blown away by how big and beautiful this print was. I love The Legend of Zelda. It's a staple of my childhood and playing it on the N64. And this machine did such an incredible job of printing something that I am super excited to put on display or even potentially hang on my wall. Now that we have our print done, we need to do some post-processing. So let's talk about that for a second because with such a big printer, that is a different situation than on a small printer like what I'm used to. In the past, I've used these little buckets or I've even got my anti-cubic washing cure station, but with the parts coming off of the Phenom, that is out the window. Nothing that I have is going to use. And also right now, it's still pretty hard to find IPA in my area, so I don't really have much cleaning agents or um, alcohol to be able to clean off the resin. So I ended up driving around to a couple different places, finding one place that had 70% IPA and really small bottles. They had like 50 of them and I didn't want to take them all and be that guy. So I took 20 of them, which wasn't exactly enough. And again, 70%, normally I like 90% or up. 70% isn't what I go for, but desperate times, you've got to get what you can. So I got 20 bottles of that, a massive crate or a tub, and I poured the resin into that tub. I wasn't anywhere near the level of what I thought that I got. It was only about half the tub when I figured it would be like three quarters or more of it. But luckily for this mask, it was plenty. I took the, again, um, flexible plate off of the uh, printer took it over to the tub and flexed it and the part dropped right in. I then went ahead and agitated the part in the tub for maybe five minutes, like dunking it underneath, taking it up and having the alcohol run out of the drain holes and just continuing over and over. I then put the lid on it and grabbed the whole entire tub and just shuck it around shuck it around, shook it around to make sure that it was nice and covered. And then I just let it sit there for about 10 minutes to soak up the IPA as much as possible. To my surprise, the 70% IPA seemed to do a really good job. I don't know if it's just with the fast resin. I've always used 90% and up because that's what I was told works best, but 70% did a great job. So if that's all that you can find, I would say grab it because it seemed to work fine for me. Next, I turned my attention to support removal and because they were heavy supports and because there was so much of them, I was dreading using tools to kind of try to remove them all. And that's where I was really surprised. I was able to basically grab the supports and tear back and forth at them probably for about five minutes, just different sections kind of pushing on them. And I heard them cracking off pretty easily. And then at the end of the five minutes, I was able to grab the mask with one hand and the supports with the other and just completely tear them apart without touching a single tool, which just kind of blew my mind. I will say that there is still like rough surface or little specks where the uh, supports met the mask. And so you could very easily sand those off. But in my instance, because they're on the back of the mask, I think that I'm just going to leave them there as you, again, you won't be able to see them when it's on display. With that being said, two thumbs up to Chitu Box because again, this was just completely manual supports. And I don't know if they've done a lot of updates in their, I mean, I know the software has a lot of updates, but I don't know if they changed their support settings to optimize them, but this was an incredibly pleasant experience uh, uh, removing these supports. Now, normally at this point, it's when you'd want to throw your part into a UV curing chamber. And I'm not going to say that you don't want to do that because I still think that that's probably a really good idea. However, this is another thing that really surprised me was when I took the part out of the IPA and removed the supports and was just kind of touching it, 
it seemed completely dry. Like it was hard, there was no stickiness, there was no tackiness to it. And if somebody had come up to me and handed me a part saying, hey, there's this cleaned and post-processed resin part, I wouldn't have known that it hadn't gone into a UV chamber because compared to all of the other printers I've used, it was way more cured. So it's possible that using other resins might yield you different results, but in my instance, the part coming off of the Phenom was, I would say, 90% complete as far as the curing goes. In my instance, living in California, I'm probably just going to take my big Phenom prints outside on the patio and let them sit for like 15 or 20 minutes and call it a day. If you're somewhere where you don't have as much sunlight all the time or that doesn't work, Throwing it into a UV chamber again is still a good idea and I think that if you're using different resins you might even need to do that but it was something that was very awesome and strange to me just having the part come off and basically be done and ready to rock and roll. Phenom is a pretty insane machine and I've already got about 10 different ideas and recommendations for people on things that they want me to print. So I am really looking forward. I can definitely see how someone that is a prop maker or a model maker or wants to do some serious big prototyping or batch production would really be interested in a machine like this. Thanks to the size of the build plate and the way MSLA technology works is you can print one part or 50 parts and as long as they fit on that build plate, it doesn't actually increase the print time, which is something that is insane and will make this really valuable for people, that, again, wanting to print batches of parts. Let me know in the comments down below if you guys are interested in seeing me paint this Majora's Mask. Um, it's something that I really think I'm going to do. I've got an airbrush kit, but it might need a replacement, but I think that it could be really fun to make a video just kind of showing it going from just this raw resin to maybe being fully colored. We'll see if I've got the skills capable. I wouldn't say I'm the best artist, but I would definitely give it my, give it my best try. <laughs> Also, if you've got any ideas of what you would print out if you had a resin printer this large, let me know in the comments down below. I always like hearing just your creative ideas. It's really inspiring and makes me think of things I never would have thought of before. On that note, I hope you guys enjoyed a first look at the Pia Poly Phenom. If you want to find out more or purchase one for yourself, links will be down below in the description. And don't forget to like and subscribe for more great videos. I make a video every single Saturday, so there is always fresh content coming your way. And I've got some really cool projects coming up. And if you want to support the channel furthermore, I will also place links down below to my Patreon. There is some really cool rewards and I've got some awesome stuff in the works. Um, thank you so much to all of my current Patreon supporters. You guys are awesome and I really appreciate you guys allowing me to spend more time doing what I love, which is making content for you guys. On that note, I look forward to seeing you guys all in my next video and I'm out. Peace guys.